Okay, YouTube, Cyrus54 here, the only place on all of the World Wide Web to actually get education, since nobody else seems to be concerned with actually teaching people anything. So, right here I have my 1981 7.4 liter Chevy Big Block. It is a Generation 4, I believe. I'm going to be teaching you how to reassemble the head, which is this whole section here cut off at this line this whole big piece of iron up here with all this spring-loaded stuff sitting on top of it so first I'm gonna give you a little bit of education I'm going to tell you the names of all of this stuff so to start off you have got your push rods you will notice that they are two different lengths that's because one is for the intake and one is for the exhaust the one is for the intake is the shorter one the one for the exhaust is the longer one. Now, on a stock 7.4 liter Chevy 454, the intake push rod should be about eight and a quarter inches long overall. The exhaust push rod should be about nine and a quarter inches overall. These are your rocker studs. Now you wanna make sure that when you put these on, there are two different thread patterns on here so that you can only put them on one way. But you want to make sure that you take your guide plate, sometimes called a pushrod retainer, and you want to make sure that you put that on first. Now personally, I'm not too concerned about torquing these down, so a simple socket wrench will do for me. But if you're the kind of person who's very anal retentive and you think that it needs to be done a specific way, pick up a torque wrench and put these suckers at about 50 pounds. So before we start to install our push rods, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our lifters, that's what this is, it's a hydraulic lifter, that makes contact with the camshaft. You want to make sure that they're all pushed down. Make sure that none of them are sticking up. Make sure they're all making flush contact before you go and take your push rods and try to assemble them into the engine. Take your rod, your push rod, make sure that it's not bent. Make sure it goes into the guide plate. Now, you remember what I was saying earlier about a longer push rod and a shorter push rod. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. But which one's which? Well, for one thing, you can look, you can see which one's the intake, which one's the exhaust. This is intake, this is intake, this is intake, this is intake, because the exhaust is coming out the other side. This is the exhaust side. And then you've got your intake side. So, whichever one you can see coming through here, this is going to be the intake. Closest one to here. Closest one to here is going to be the intake. 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 The one furthest away is going to be the exhaust. However, there's another way of looking at it. You have your retainer plate, your guide plate is going to be lower over here, and it's going to be higher over here. The lower one, which is going to take the shorter rod, is going to be your intake. The one that's going to take the longer rod, the higher one, is going to be your exhaust. Now it's time to install the rocker arm. Again, this only goes on one particular way. Over here is where you're going to put your push rod. Over here is where it's going to be making contact with the top of the valve spring only goes on one specific way very hard to screw it up and now we move on to this ultimately it's just known as a ball it's rounded on one end and flat on the other you want to make sure that you put the rounded end going down flat end going up now it's crucial that you put that in round end going down flat end going up because when we take our stud nut also known as a rocker nut, depending on what you want to call it. 
it is flat on one end and round on the other. You want to make sure that the flat end goes down and the round end goes up. So why isn't that crucial piece of information in anybody else's videos? I mean, I've looked at thousands of them personally myself, and I have not seen that listed anywhere. Nobody else is explaining such need-to-know information to anybody. Why? My guess is they don't want you to know, but the fact is I do want you to know. I want you to know just as much as you want to know and need to know. Now in my case, this is an 11 sixteenths. I'm only going to tighten it down until it gets hand tight. I don't want to go any tighter than that. Now assuming this is the first video that you've seen on how to do something like this, because there are thousands of videos out there that explain to you some of this, but not all of this. As you're tightening this, you want to make sure you move it up and down. And as you're tightening that, you want to make sure you take out all of that slack till eventually you're moving your hand up and down, but this doesn't move. Now at this stage, before you do the final tighten down, it's okay if you have a little bit of play back and forth before you put your wrench on there and do the final tighten, but you do not want your push rod to come in and out. You want to make sure that it's solid in place and doesn't come up and down, up and down. Once you've gone through all of that, you put your wrench on, make sure it's aligned with the block, one half turn. And then it's done. Now it's not moving at all. That one's moving because I didn't tighten that one. One half turn. 